Tesla's 1010 event, which in theory should be a robotaxi event, is only a couple of days away. And so I thought it would be worthwhile to go through exactly what we should expect and look for questions that I want to see answered about a potential robotaxi. I'm going to focus here on the robotaxi. I'm not going to focus on any sort of robot that may be made because we're probably years away from being any sort of reality or be being in normal people's homes. So let's focus on the robotaxi itself, what it would actually take to get that to market. Because there's a lot of questions for Tesla to answer, just as companies like Waymo and Cruise and Uber launch their vehicles for commercial service. People are actually riding in vehicles that don't have a driver. Tesla is not offering that today. Are they going to in the near future? That's what I wanna to try to answer. My name's Travis Hoyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content and thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you your top 10 stocks to buy right now. The first thing that Tesla has to answer is whether or not it's going to get past level two autonomy. And let me explain exactly what this means. If you go to Tesla's website and you try to buy full self-driving with a vehicle, it's not actually called full self-driving anymore. It is now called full self-driving supervised. That is after a number of lawsuits that the company has now started to settle related to the advertising of its product, which is not full self-driving. It's a level two autonomous system. How do we know that? Because it says it right here. Currently enabled features require active driver supervision and do not make the vehicle autonomous. This is Tesla's words, this is not my words. Does not make the vehicle autonomous. The activation and use of these features are dependent on development and regulatory approval, which may take longer in some jurisdictions. What exactly does that mean? This is the image that you wanna know if you're interested in autonomous driving. Level zero all the way through level five. Now in theory, what Tesla is developing is really a level five system where an autonomous vehicle can drive itself anywhere in the world. There's no geofencing. That's the difference between level four and level five. That's the primary difference. But right now, Tesla is level two autonomy. That means that the liability for any sort of accident falls on the driver. Once you go to level three, the liability now goes with the automaker. You can see that in the description here. You are not driving when these automated driving features are engaged, even if you are seated in the driver's seat. Now with level three, you have to be available to drive, but you are not actually the driver. You can essentially fall asleep if you, if you want in the driver's seat. Level four is gonna be something where you don't have to be available to pick up the wheel, but there is a steering wheel in the car. This is what Cruise and Waymo are launching in California, in Texas. They're going to Georgia. They're starting to really start to scale this business in partially with the help of Uber as well. That's gonna be kind of the interface that some of these ride sharing services are gonna be interacting with. So when does Tesla get to the point where they're beyond level two? That is the first and most fundamental question that Elon Musk and Tesla needs to answer. And let me give some context to where the company is today. I know that a lot of people think that Tesla is a leader in autonomous driving, but if we look at companies that are actually deploying fully autonomous vehicles on the road with regulatory approval, again, something that Tesla noted in their sales of FSD supervised, in the state of California, you have Waymo, Neuro, there's a product from Mercedes-Benz. There's a few locations where they're able to be operated. That's it. That's the only companies that have a permit to deploy their technology, who is testing their technology. This is testing without a safety driver. There are about a dozen companies here. Auto X, Apollo, R3 Neuro Robot, WeRide, Zooks. The biggest here and has the permit to operate in the most locations is obviously Waymo. They are by far the biggest as far as that level four ride sharing autonomy goes, but there's not a lot of companies and Tesla is not on this list. They are not testing without a safety driver in the vehicle. And in fact, they have a permit to test with a safety driver in the vehicle, but they are not using that permit. They are driving zero miles right now in the state of California testing their vehicles and reporting to the state how many disengagement they have, what all those incidents are when there is a disengagement, because once you start testing, you have to actually report a lot of data to the state. Tesla is not testing anything right now. I wanna make that extremely clear because this is something the company has to answer if they're actually going to launch some sort of robo taxi. If there is not gonna be a driver in the car, they have to go through regulatory approval and they are not doing that in any state today. So what should we be looking for? 
I want to start with what Deepwater Asset Management said, because this is a company that gets a lot of attention for what they think about Tesla. But I think some of these expectations are absolutely crazy. The RoboTaxi, I expect to see a physical prototype of the RoboTaxi. We believe that it will be a futuristic feel like the Cybertruck without a steering wheel, pedals, or mirrors. I wanna be clear about this again. That car would not be legal to put on roads at scale. This is something that General Motors dealt with with Cruise. They wanted to launch the Cruise Origin vehicle, which was does not have pedals, does not have a steering wheel, but basically the way that the regulations are written today, you could test that on a limited basis, but you couldn't make 10,000, 100,000 of those. It wouldn't be a scalable product. And regulators have not given guidance or approval for what that will look like in the future. What are there gonna be the rules around that? So GM basically said, we can't take the risk of not actually being able to launch this vehicle. So we're gonna actually launch with a modified Chevy Bolt. That's what they're gonna do in 2025. Cruise is gonna be scaling its business first on the Chevy Bolt technology and an updated Chevy Bolt for 2025. Is Tesla gonna in introduce some sort of vehicle that doesn't have a steering wheel, that doesn't have pedals? Maybe they will, but they won't be able to put that vehicle on the road at scale as things currently stand today. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. Beyond the physical vehicle itself, what I wanna hear is what is the launch strategy? What is the plan for building this network? Is Tesla gonna be tapping into something like Uber? Uber is obviously tapping into Waymo and Cruz to try to get into aut autonomous driving. So those companies are working together to build their own fleet. Is Tesla gonna to try to build its own fleet of vehicles? Is it gonna start with its own vehicles first? So Tesla owned vehicles. That is what I think has been indicated in conference calls and in other conferences and discussions in the past. But in theory, the idea in the future would be that you would be able to own a Tesla vehicle and just allow it to go out and drive itself, pick people up and make a little bit of money on the side. What are the economics and strategies behind that? If Tesla is building its own fleet, how many are they gonna build? How long is that gonna take? How much is it gonna cost? Are people gonna be tapping into that with a Tesla app? There's a lot of questions to be answered behind that. If they're gonna to try to offload that asset ownership, the ownership of the vehicle itself to customers, our customers gonna to have to pay $99 a month to subscribe to FSD, and on top of that, do some sort of revenue share with Tesla. What are gonna be the protections for the vehicle? Are you gonna be able to monitor the vehicle as someone else is riding in it? Lots and lots of questions to be answered if Tesla is gonna be launching some sort of robotaxi. And the reason this is important is because Tesla is an extremely valuable company. As I'm recording, Tesla's market cap is $750 billion. By contrast, General Motors market cap is $50 billion. I mentioned that GM, which owns most of Cruise, that is actually a scaling business. There's a strategy behind what that company's robotaxi business is gonna look like five to 10 years from now. If Tesla launches something that isn't going to be a reality to for four or five years, and remember they need to get regulatory approval, not only for the technology, for the FSD itself, but also for the vehicle potentially. If this product is not gonna be on the road for a number of years, Tesla is gonna be years behind its competitors. And so investors right now are paying for a business that doesn't yet exist, and we don't know when it will exist because FSD has been in customers' hands for four years. Elon Musk has been promising for six, seven years that you will be able to turn your Tesla into a ride-sharing vehicle and make money off of it. He said this was gonna be an appreciating asset. That has not been a reality because FSD itself is not a level four or level five autonomous driving system. So Tesla has to answer a lot of these questions and they need to answer them this week. If this is just some sort of prototype and there's no clear deadlines on when FSD is actually gonna be level five approved by regulators to actually drive itself around cities and do so safely and report all of that data just the way that every other company does, then I think it's gonna be terrible for Tesla because they're gonna be falling behind a lot of their competitors. And so a lot of questions to answer. I'm gonna be back later in the week discussing exactly what we learned from Tesla. But those are the standards that I'm gonna hold the company and Elon Musk to. If they're just hand-waving over some of these things and just assuming that FSD is gonna be full self-driving, unsupervised, level five autonomy in the near future, I wanna hear exactly when that's gonna happen how they're gonna get regulatory approval and what all the milestones are behind that. Because these other companies I've been talking about have been working on this for years and they're just now getting to the point where they're getting more and more vehicles on the road. They're starting to build that fleet. 
That's a really compelling service. You're turning transportation into a service. If Tesla has the same vision, they need to get those vehicles on the road relatively soon. So let me know what you think about the October 10th event. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you here next time.